I've been working for several years now on a collaborative project together with the ETH Zurich Game Technology Center and Disney Research about augmented reality. So what's augmented reality? You've probably heard this term together with virtual reality. These usually go hand in hand. Virtual reality is the idea where you put on a virtual reality headset and you're transformed into the virtual world. Augmented reality is kind of the flip side of this idea. Augmented reality takes virtual objects and brings them into your world. And these are very powerful concepts. And what I've come to learn over the past years with our experiments is that the real winning proposition here, the real transformative aspect of this technology is the ability it has to enhance creativity. So why is that? That's really my core message. And if you think about it, over the past thousands of years, you know, humans, we've developed amazing tools to interact and create in the real world. And in more recent history, since the advent of computers, we've built interfaces within the computers, digital tools that allow us to do things that seem like magic compared to what was possible only 50 years ago. And the real promise of augmented reality is to merge these two worlds, to merge the virtual and the physical. And it allows us to take the magic of what's possible in a digital tool and bring it into the world around us. And when you combine that power of digital processing with the intuitiveness of working in the real world, then there's this exponential increase in what's possible to create. And that's a really exciting concept. So in this bigger spectrum, I want to talk about one aspect that I'm especially interested in, which is the idea of creative play. This is the concept of children interacting with their physical environment in a playful and creative way. This is an important part of early childhood and childhood development. But in fact, because we have such amazing content ready for consumption, there's a risk and a fear that children, in the end, become passive consumers, and they lose that direct physical interaction with the environment around us. And I really believe that augmented reality holds a unique potential to impact the situation by providing magical digital overlays on top of traditional, real-world, creative activities. And this is the concept we're calling augmented creativity, where we use augmented reality to enhance creative play. So to illustrate this idea, I want to show you several live demos on stage using my iPad. Before I get started, I want to give a big personal thanks to the team who helped put this together. So with that, we are switching to my iPad screen. So what you see behind me is actually exactly what I see on my screen. And I want to start with coloring. So this is one of childhood's most early creative endeavors. I have a coloring book page here. And when I view that page, our software recognizes the line art that's printed on it and displays this digital character that matches the line art. That's pretty cool already. However, at the moment, she's blank because we haven't colored her. So I'm going to do some uh, live coloring on her dress right now, just to add a little stripe there. And now, when I tap the screen, the software we've written dynamically captures that texture that I just colored and applies it to the dress. So in fact, I have a fully colored version that I made uh, just this morning. So let me capture this one. And what's colored on the front, what you see on the front is copied directly. However, we also have an algorithm that invents what I might have colored on the back based on what I colored on the front. Now, coloring books also often are accompanied with puzzles. 
and I have here uh, maze, and you see <laughs> our system actually validates that the maze was solved correctly and displays this digital character who follows the path uh, that I've drawn on the page. If I had made a mistake, he would have, in fact, uh, stop and wait. We also have a circle the word puzzle. So it checks that I've circled the proper words and uh, delivers this reward uh, for completing it correctly. So we're not restricted to you know, things right in front of me on this table. There's a, a painting beside me, which is something you might see at a museum. Museums have a lot of cultural importance, but for children, they can be super boring. They're not the most exciting experience. Augmented creativity can help with that. So when I view this painting with my app while well, we see it, but because we're using the system, we can do some magical things. So if I tap on the screen, we throw uh, balls of paint and are able to recolor this painting to create something more exciting. And I can even go farther than that. If I swipe, we can uh, explore some new hairstyles for this uh, character. Let's find one. Ah, that's pretty good. I can even uh, move the nose around a little bit. Oops, let's try to make the eyes a little bigger. And I would say, you know, with these changes, he's a pretty happy guy. <laughs> so this allows a child to become their own Picasso when they visit a museum. We've also explored bringing gameplay into this um, suite of demos. And for that, I have uh, some rubber stamps. So these are actually ones we created in our office with our laser cutter. And I'm going to show you how we can meld games into the world around us using these stamps. Uh, and for that, I'm going to just stamp right here on the paper. And when I create that stamp, the system actually recognizes what I've just done and creates this corresponding character that matches the stamp. It even knew that the ink I used was blue and colored the character blue. I'm going to make a green one right now. And once this is done, we actually can implement a simple game where these two characters battle one another. <laughs> and the full interaction really comes from this physical, kind of tangible movement in the real world. Now, these are two different uh, concepts. Well, we have visuals. We saw we can create new interaction. What about other sensing modalities? So how about listening or hearing? And for that, I have a number, of, uh, a number of cards on the table. And these cards have different instruments and musical styles printed on them. So the first one is the vocals. And when I view this card with my iPad, we display a character well, I'm a working for my baby. Who's now performing for us? He's singing solo right now, so let's give him some instruments to accompany. So just like that, we have a rock version of this song. But we can also bring in some other, uh, some other instruments. So now I've actually created a reggae track. Um, pretty interesting. What about something a bit more classic? So I'm going to add this. Add this string quartet, so we have a more classic feel, which is interesting, but I think for this group, we should rather go full-on techno. <laughs> now the only thing missing is some lighting effects. There are 
So there's really limitless possibilities we can do with this technology. I can even, for example, bring in the character that I colored earlier to join the performance in a duet. Or allow our friend Picasso to uh, join the fun. So the, the theme today, thank you. The theme today is people first, but we had a whole lot of fun developing this technology over the past years and putting together these demos. And I think it shows that, you know, sometimes the most satisfying endeavor is when you really think about putting the children first. Thank you very much. Cool.